Hi, today we are visiting the Bush Plain Museum located in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. This museum is of special interest to Paul because as a teenager growing up in Canada, he worked as a bush pilot. Come explore this interesting museum with us and if you enjoy watching, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons at any time. Aircraft from Canada are identified with either a C or a CF at the beginning and use only letters, not numbers. The call sign for this plane in communications would be said using the phonetic alphabet as Charlie Fox Uniform Whiskey Echo. Check out the wheels on skis. These raise and lower around the tires, allowing the pilot to take off or land on either land or snow. The Stinson Reliant SR9 has a body and wings manufactured using some metal, but are primarily Irish linen covered with a substance that hardens and pulls the fabric tight. It has gull wings, which are thicker than normal for better lift, and for landing on snow, the wheels were removed and the ski sitting on the ground would be mounted to the plane. The CB Amphibious plane has a bottom like a boat and the wheels rotate forward and up for landing on water. It has a third door in the front where the black line on the plane is. You open the door and step out onto the front to access shore. There is also a cleat on the nose to tie the plane to the dock. A peek into the cockpit of another amphibious plane. The pilot sits on the left, co-pilot on the right, and the instrument panel includes fire drop equipment along the top. The plane lands on water with the landing gear up. A compartment in the nose holds an anchor and there is a cleat for tying up at dock. All airplanes must follow marine rules when on the water. A scoop on the bottom picks up water while the plane maintains full speed and then when the pilot gets the signal water is full lifts off again. The loops and extra rivets on the side of the plane add strength when picking up water for firefighting. An air-cooled nine-cylinder engine with two spark plugs per cylinder. The pistons in the engine turn the shaft in the center which turns the propeller. The cylinder head of a radial engine. The Voyager Airways contains the call letters Charlie Golf Charlie Michael Lima. Newer Canadian planes only use the letter C, not CF in their identification. Conair Freight bought this Navy Grumman for commercial use. You can tell it was a Navy plane by its heavier landing gear and folding wings for storage on ship. This CFAYO crashed in 1953 and remained in the brush until 1992 when the wreckage was recovered. Most of the aircraft was destroyed by the crash and fire. The most discernible parts of the wreckage are the bent propeller in the front and the pilot and co-pilot seats. Looking at the Bell 47 helicopter on floats, you can see the normal blue landing skids, then rubber inflatable floats for water landings. The U.S. version, a Bell H-13 Sioux, was used on the TV show MASH. For medevac purposes, patients were placed into cocoon-like stretcher pods mounted on each landing skid of the chopper. This Fokker USA float plane was designed by legendary aviation pioneer Anthony Fokker of the Netherlands. The plane is a tri-motor with one engine under each wing plus one on the front. It is a float plane and made from some fabric. The de Havilland Beaver, produced near Toronto, is referred to as the best bush plane ever built and is the plane that Paul flew when a bush pilot in Northern Ontario. It is a single engine plane with wings set high to allow taking off and landing in short distances on wheels, floats, or skis. Paul always flew with floats, landing and taking off on water. The plane here is set up for firefighting. The ailerons are for banking, which turns the plane, and the flaps control lift. The torpedo looking part holds water for firefighting. The floats are compartments and as a bush pilot, Paul sometimes put a small amount of water and fresh fish into them caught by fishermen. The red line on the float warns to stay away due to prop rotation. The paddle on the float is mandatory on float panes. If you are unable to drift into shore, you sit on the float and paddle the plane in. Paul did this for a considerable distance when the engine on his plane blew and he was forced to land. The rudder for steering on water has a locking mechanism for takeoff. A similar setup to this 1940s firefighter bush camp could also be used by pilots or hunters. Paul usually slept in his plane if necessary. Paul and I hope you enjoyed visiting the Bush Plane Museum with us. We continue our travels through North America and invite you to check back often for upcoming videos 
including a trip up a mountain to a marble quarry still active today in Marble, Colorado, and a drive to visit Crystal Mill and Crystal City, a Colorado ghost town that still has year-round inhabitants despite being 9,000 feet up a mountain with no grocery, no post office, and only accessible by a single lane, high clearance 4x4 off-road trail. Before signing off, don't forget to hit the like button, leave us your comments, and subscribe so you can receive updates as we produce new videos.